What's up everybody, The Network Berg here. Hope you've been doing well. This video will be a continuation of the previous video that I made regarding VRF. So this is part two, and this will be covering spanning a VRF across an ISP network. So this is really a very, very big topic, and it's one of my favorite topics as well. I love when we start doing these cool ISP things. So if you are keen to learn, please watch the video. It might be a little bit lengthy because there's a lot to cover, but it's going to be so worth it. Anyways, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the video. Okay, so let's quickly talk about why do we want to set up a VRF on the ISP network. The first and foremost thing that I can think of is to provide different services to different customers. If we are a small ISP, it might not be an issue, but the bigger we start getting and the bigger customers we start adding to our networks, the bigger the chances are that they are going to have overlapping subnets, or you might just run out of subnets. And <laughs> what are you going to do then? So to fix that is we will use VRFs, which enables us to create our own little cloud for the customer on our ISP network so that they can have their own subnets in their cloud and it won't interfere with our network or any other customer's network either. So the customer would effectively be able to get to their own sites in the VRF and they'll break out through uh, the VRF somewhere along the line, but it's their VRF, so it won't interfere with anybody. So let's get into setting up the VRF. Okay, so let's log on to our PE router so that we can configure the VRFs. First things first, I'll just log on to PE1 via the command line. I will show you this on Wimbox as well. And from the command line, let's just maximize that and let's just verify some details. So I'm going to look at my IP addresses and I've got a loopback interface with the IP 3.1.1.3, which is important because router or PE2 has the same type of loopback interface, but it's got .4 and the OSPF is sending all those details. So we're going to use that to connect and establish some BGP stuff. But let's just quickly do the base setup. So first things first, let's create the VRF. So we're going to go IP route, VRF, add. We're going to give it a routing mark, which is basically the name. I can call this customer one. We need to actually add an interface. So I will add ether four, which is going to customer, customer one's HQ. There it is, ether four. And that could be a VLAN as well. It doesn't need to be a physical interface. So ether four, and now the important bits we need to talk about a route distinguisher and route targets. So route distinguisher, if you press the question mark, you'll see there's a route dash distinguisher equals. Think of this as a identifier, or almost like a router ID, but for the VRFs, which will be used to be spanned through the LDP or the MPLS. So in our case, we are going to assign a route distinguisher and this will be the first part will be 65002, which is my AS for this router, but it doesn't need to be that. You could make that zero, you can make that 100, you can make that whatever you want. And then followed by a colon, and then one, I'm gonna add. Zero, colon zero is the backbone, but we're going to use 65002, colon one, for customer one's route identifier or the distinguisher. Then we also need to set, oh, I should have set it there already. So IP route VRF set. And then I'm just going to set the route, not the route distinguisher, the import route targets, which will be the same because this is for customer one. So the import route targets is the routes that it will be pulling in from the MPLS table. And this will be 65002. And then similarly, we have an export route targets, which is the same, but these are the routes that we're sending out via the MPLS to the other routers. And presto. So we've added the VRF. Now we need to actually add the MPLS side of things. And don't worry again, I will put links in the description on how to set up OSPF and MPLS. So we're going to do MPLS, LDP, set, enable, yes. We're going to need the LSR, which I'm just going to make 3.1.1.3, which is the loopback address for this router. And then we need a transport address, which is the real important one, 3.1.1.3, which is also just the loopback address. 
then we're going to add the MPLS interfaces. So MPLS LDP interface add, and our interface is Ether1, Ether2, and Ether3. Those are the three interfaces that are actually going across my provider network. Ether1, Ether2, and Ether3. Awesome, the MPLS side is done. How quick was that? And now finally, we need to add some BGP configuration to actually span the routes and learn it. So we're going to use routing BGP instance. Let's add an instance. The name will be AS65002, which will be a part of the backbone. The AS is 65002 and the router ID will be 3.1.1.3, which is the loop packet address of the router again. And do I need to set anything else? I don't need to set anything else here. So I'm just going to hit enter. Ooh, I made a mistake. Let's just quickly fix that. Routing BGP instance set router ID 3.1.1.3. Routing BGP instance print. Let me just see. It is one. Let's just try and set that again. I don't know why it didn't take it, but it's fine. So there we go, the router ID is correct now. So we're happy, this looks good. We've added an instance, but now we need to add a peer and also a VRF. So what we're going to do is routing, BGP, peer, add, name. So we can call this VRF underscore cust1 underscore PE2. This is the VRF for customer one which I'm sending to PE2. We can make the remote address will be 3.1.1.4, which is the loopback address of router four or PE2. And our remote address or AS is 65002. So this will be used as IBGP. And our instance will be 65002. There's two more things that we need to complete as well. And that is our update source, which will be LO0, which is the loopback address where 3.1.1.3 is bound. And we need to set our address families. So by default, you have address families. It will always generally be IP. That's on by default. But we want to enable more services. So we will be running VPN v4, which will allow for that layer 3 VPN or the VRF to be spanned across. I'm going to hit enter. Um, did I not add the AS? Oh, sorry, it's AS65002, there we go. So let's add the BGP VRF instance. We can do this by going routing BGP instance VRF. And we need to set two things we need to add. We're going to add the instance, which is going to be our backbone, 65002. And then we need to set our routing mark, which will be the customer's VRF. So in our case, this was customer one. And we need to decide what type of routes do we want to distribute across the network. So I'm going to redistribute my connected routes. And I'm going to redistribute my other BGP. Yes. And then I'm going to hit enter. And apparently I've already created it, but this is fine. This is legacy config. So if you just go to the routing BGP instance VRF export, there it is. And that's completed. So now we've done the one side, but we need to do the other side. Now let's do that via Winbox. So I'll just quickly minimize this, open up a Winbox session, connect to Roman and go to my PE2. And let's just quickly verify some details again. My loopback address is indeed 3.1.1.4. Let's go into our IP routes, VRF, click on the plus. Our routing mark will be customer one. Our interfaces will be ether four because that is the interface again that is going to the branch. 
our route distinguisher is 65002 colon 1. And I'm just going to copy that for my import and export targets. Apply. And now we've got the VRF for customer one on PE2. So we need to now enable the MPLS side. So I'm just going to go LDP settings, enable it. My LSR ID is 3.1.1.4. And that's my transport address as well. And I need to add my LDP interfaces. So I'm going to click plus and that's ether one, two and three. So I'm just adding them quickly and they've been added great so we should be able to learn some labels yes we are learning labels fantastic so we're learning the routes and stuff via the mpls now let's do the bgp setup so routing bgp let's do our instance our instance is 65002 our as is 65002 as well and our router ID is 3.1.1.4. And I can leave everything else basic. Let's go into our peers, click on the plus. Our name is VRF cust1 PE1. Our instance will be 65002. Our remote address will be the loopback address of router 3 or PE1, which was 3.1.1.3. Our remote AS is 65002, so this is IBGP, and I don't need to tweak anything else here. I'm going to apply this. Wait, I do need to tweak some stuff, sorry. I need to go into my advanced. I need to select my address family, which is VPN4, and I need to set my update source as the LO0. Cool. Cool. <laughs> and our BGP is already established, but we have one more step. Let's go into our VRFs. Remember that instance VRF. Let's add our instance here, which is 65002, the backbone, and the routing mark will be for customer one. And now we can select what we want to send out again. So I'm going to redistribute my connected and my other BGP, and I'm going to apply this. And that's it. That is it. That's so easy. The only routes that I'm going to learn now, if you go to the VPN4 routes, you'll see which route you're learning as well as how it's being sent over the MPLS. So this we can see is definitely going over the MPLS and this route I know is on my router because my out label has been popped at zero. Cool, cool. So next thing, let's span the customer's land across, which is their 192.168.20.0 slash 24 network and 192.168.30.0 slash 24 network. The dot 20 is the HQ, the dot 30 is the branch. So I'm going to do this with BGP as well. I've already got BGP peers configured at the CPEs. I just need to configure them on my PEs. So let's do it on PE2 while I'm on here. Let's go into our peers, add a peer. I'll call this peer to cost one branch. My instance will be 65002. And actually, I'm, I'm lying. <laughs> I need to add another instance quickly. So let's add another instance. The instance, the AS can be the same, 65002, but the name, I'm going to call this cust1. And my router ID for this, I'm just going to make this the WAN address between the CPE and the PE which is 172.18.0.5. And now importantly, routing table, I'm going to select customer one. I'm going to apply this and I'm going to go into my peers and I click the plus. Then we can make a peer to cust one branch. My instance will be the cust one because we selected that routing table for that AS now. Our remote address will be 172.18, I think, dot zero dot six. Our remote AS is 100 because that is the AS for this branch. And I will send them out a default route. So I'll default originate. 
and I don't need to fill in anything else. So let me just apply. I'm not going to do anything here on this is like a normal BGP setup now. And let's just see, do I connect with my customer? Yes, I do. And I am learning a prefix from them. So if I go to my VPN four routes, awesome. You see, I'm learning this 30.0 on ether four, and it is on this router. So we're going to do the same thing on PE one, just from the command line. So on PE one, I'm going to go routing BGP instance, add name cost one AS still six, five double zero two. It's the same AS and my routing table becomes customer one. Perfect. All right, so I've already got this configured here as well. Let me just go routing BGP instance print. Oh, I know what it's doing. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot to specify the router ID. And that should be 172.18.0.1. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so we've got an instance. Now we just need to add our peer. So IP route, no, routing BGP peer, add. The name will be peer to cost one HQ. The AS will be remote AS is also 100. That's what I've given to the customer. It doesn't need to always be the same. It could have been 101, but I wanted to use it consistent so it's 100 for the hq as well um, the remote address is 172.18.02 my instance is cost one and i just want to see if there's anything else oh and i need to also just default originate always so now i'm just sending a default route out to customer one's hq let's hit the enter let's see if our peer establishes so the cost one peer is established so let's quickly see from the command line if we do a routing bgp uh, vpn4 route print these are all of the layer three routes that we're learning and this is for customer one. This is their route distinguisher. So we know it belongs to customer one. And these are the routes that we're learning. So you see, I've done all this on the ISP network. So now let's actually test and see if, if the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. So I'm going to just minimize this, minimize my one box. And let's go to this LAN PC at customer one's HQ. Let me connect. And here we are at customer one. So I'll go into my applications. I'll go into my system tools, go into the terminal. And let's just see, can I ping? Let's just firstly see, can I ping my own gateway? 192.168.20.1. I can get to my gateway. So can I ping 192.168.30.1? Wow, holy smokes, I can ping. 30.1 which is router one's ip for the branch let's see can i ping 30.200 i can so i've got two different sites for the same customer and they're on a single vrf on the isp network this doesn't bother my isp network and it doesn't bother my other customers i could have more customers like a customer two sharing the same routing tables or not same routing tables but same routes same subnets and it would work for both customers because they're in different VRFs. So that will wrap up this video. I do hope you've learned something. I know it is a bit confusing sometimes, but if you go through the video again, uh, just look at the things you're not sure about. And again, watch the videos about the OSPF, the MPLS, and I'll even link the BGP again as well so that you can get familiar with that. But this is where the this, this stuff is really fun when you start working at this level. So I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.